This is the Michael K. Show podcast. Listen live weekday afternoon starting at 3 on 98.7 ESPN in New York. The ESPN app, the TuneIn app, or on your smart speaker. Hey Alexa, play 98.7 ESPN. This portion of the Michael K. Show on 98.7 ESPN is brought to you by 2 by London, the engagement shop by London Jewelers. Picker designed the perfect engagement ring to fit every budget. Visit 2 by London at the Americana Manhasset, East Hampton, and Westfield World Trade Center. Uh, is the coach there yet, or should I take some phone calls, Andrew? Oh, he's on the phone with him right now. I love how this works out. Don't you love when a plan comes comes together? Oh, perfect. that's beautiful. All right, let's bring in the coach of the New York Jets, Robert Sala. He joins us as he does every Monday right here on the show at 3.30. Coach, how you doing? It's Michael, Don, and Peter. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Doing all right. So you've obviously watched the uh, the tape. Do you take anything from the tape that you didn't see watching it live? No, you know the the tape pretty much just confirmed everything that we had we had already known after after seeing the game live. And um, and there's there's a lot of lot of stuff that we can take away from that were positive, And there's going to be a lot of things that we could take away from that uh, that we need to get better at for sure. All right, give me the positive. Let's let's be the glass half full guys for now. What's the positive? I uh, thought our O line ran the heck out of the ball. Uh, our O line and backs were much better uh, running the ball. Um, I thought they protected really well. Communication all the way across the board was very good. Um, uh, defensively, uh, stood up time and time again on sudden change opportunities. And by sudden change, I'm talking about takeaways or uh, going for it on fourth down. Um, you know, they were, they were, I mean, the third down defense, uh, I think, held them to three of 13. I don't got the number in front of me. I'm sorry. But uh, but it was uh, really good on third down, really good in the red zone, and uh, and, and really loved the way the defense finished the uh, the game on that goal line stand on first and goal from the five when I've, I've seen a lot of teams just fold and allow teams to walk in at that point. So a um, lot of good things from there. Obviously, the turnovers – when you look back at it and in this league, when you give up, when you have a minus four turnover differential, it's impossible to win in this league and, uh, and it proved it uh, yesterday. All right. Of the four interceptions, how many of them are on your quarterback? Uh, good question, man. <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, the first one, uh, you know, the the first one he threw it to Corey, uh, n- not the greatest decision. Obviously, there's a lot of things that entail in that one with regards to pressure and just being smart with the football. Uh, second one on the boot, you know, you'd love Corey to come down with that one. You'd love for him to put a better ball on Corey and Corey to come down with that on the boot. And we're, shoot, we catch that one. We're in field goal range uh, right there, but uh, it slips through and it is what it is. Uh, third one, he's got to be better with setting his feet. Um and uh, and getting the ball to his receiver, uh, getting it up and down, he just kind of kind of lofted one in there. And then uh, obviously that um, the last play, it was second and twenty eight, and those, those are one of the deals where it's okay to be boring, just just get yards. And this is every, all the way across the board, coaches and players, just understanding the situation in terms of giving a play call that just takes yards, con- not necessarily concede the series, but. Let's just try to gather as many yards as we can. See if we can get to a third and manageable. You don't have to get it all at once and uh, and see what happens. But um, but on on second and twenty eight, trying to trying to take a shot to get a first down, and you make a, a bad situation worse, which led to a touchdown. So um, so those are the four. I I loved the quote you had yesterday. And you just used it again. It's okay to be boring. But then I started to think about it, Coach. That the reason that you guys love. Zach Wilson is that he is so dynamic and he can make off schedule throws and he's off balance and he can move in the pot. I mean, he's nothing about him is boring. So when you say it's okay to be boring, isn't he playing against type if he becomes boring all of a sudden? No, because you know, when you look at uh, the the greatest quarterbacks in this league, you look at Tom Brady, you look at Mahomes, you look at Aaron Rodgers, who the last two are probably the most exciting players in football in terms of the, the way they play. They will take space every day of the week. They will just get the ball to their playmakers. They're more than happy getting five, six, seven yards to completion. Like that's like that's stealing to them. And uh, and and then when the defense has to adjust 
uh, because you're just dinking and dunking your way through. When they have to adjust, that's when you can go be electric and go take your shots and blow things off the top of the, you know, blow the top off the coverage and all that stuff. But you've got to earn that respect first and and show that you'll be able to play that that you can play that type of game where you just stand in the middle of the ring and you throw jabs and then, and when that when that left hand comes down, you throw that haymaker right. But it's but it's all part of a process and you know you look at like I said those those top guys they are. The, they're happy just taking the quick one and taking the space and and yeah. and keeping staying ahead of the chains. Is he receptive to this? I mean, have you spoken to him about it? Oh yeah, no, he knows. He he watches it. The kid's smart now. He's uh, and uh, and he sees it all. And he's you know, it's it's part of going through a process of being a rookie. I mean, it's uh, it's not easy to play quarterback in this league, let alone be a rookie for the first time. And um, and he's watching the tape just like everybody else. And uh, and and he's he's learning everything he can and he's and he's processing everything he can to the best of his ability and he's he's only going to get better from this coach i know things were not going well in the second half you're down 16 but that's still a two score game with a lot of time left in the fourth quarter it seemed like you were very deliberate on offense not that you had to play hurry up but it didn't seem like there was a sense of urgency why was that the case well you know what we had the ball at midfield uh at the start of the fourth quarter uh, plenty of time left to get two possessions, um, and uh, uh, I, I believe after that series we we get the ball to the field goal range. Um, you know, it's fourth and I believe it was eighteen or something like that, and we kick a field goal with about God. I, I wish I had the time in front of me, but uh, we kick a field goal. We miss it, and then from there it's um, you know they they get the explosive. They make it a three possession game. We come back on the, on on offense, and can the urgency be a little bit more? Sure, um, you know this. You you could always look back at it and and say we could have been a little bit quicker. We were going, um, we were going no huddle and all that, but uh, but at the same time, it just we got to that to that part of the field. It was fourth down, and I wanted to get it back to a two possession game, and which we did, and uh, and then time time pretty much just ran out on us. Jets head coach Robert Sala is our guest here on the Michael K Show. Do you have to, just getting back to Wilson for a moment, do you have to talk with your offensive coordinator and tell him, I want more vanilla? If you think it's vanilla, give me even more vanilla because if the calls are vanilla, I mean, this guy can't really go off script. I mean, Wilson can't go off script and can't do the hero game. So do you want LaFleur to be even more vanilla than he's been so far with him? No, you know, I I thought Mike – I thought Mike really called a good game. Um, if you look at that first half, um, you know, when you talk about vanilla, uh, God, I wish I, you know what? Sure. I'm going to go to my computer and tell you, <laughs> you, know, you, you, you go through and, uh, you look at the first, that first half and, uh, you know, first play of the game, we, we run the ball and get a good eight yard gain. Second play is, uh, is the interception off the play fake. Right. Uh, third play of the game is a is a run. Next play is the interception off the boot, and then we go run, 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 run. Uh, the pass to Elijah Moore up the sideline on the fake screen. Um, screen, run, 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 run. It's third and four, uh, and it's the first drop back pass we have of the game. And so the offensive line was really imposing its will, mm-hmm. and and Mike did a great job riding it and. Um, and we had two drop back passes in the first half, and so that's like, that's but vanilla. we were that, but we were, and and it's not because he's protecting the quarterback; it's because our O line was doing such a great job getting push and generating uh, a big chunk yardage in the run game. And so credit to Mike to to have patience and stick with that and grind it out. We just we just didn't quite finish uh, when you when you turn the ball over, you can't reap the the, the benefits of of your rewards or your, your work. And, uh, and, and it's unfortunate, but it's something we can all learn from coach. Let's, uh, let's talk about the Denzel Mims situation. Obviously you guys are already down Crowder to start the season. We saw last year, some flashes from Mims that made us think he, he could be a threat this year. When you see someone like him as a healthy scratch, it obviously concerns jets fans. Can you get more specific with us about what he's not or has not shown you guys that led to him being a healthy scratch yesterday? You know, he, it, it's, um, I just said it in the presser, you know, like it, throughout, throughout football and it's linebackers, corners, wide receivers. When you're one of the first three, it's all defense. Like it's, 
or defense or offense depends. So let's go wide receiver. You, there's five guys up on game day. The, the top three guys are offense. The fourth guy is going to be a mixture, but he's mainly going to be he's, you're going to lend more towards offense. And then the fifth guy has got to be a special teams guy first. And um, and you look at the guys who are active in terms of what they've been able to produce. And they're you know you got Corey Davis, you got Elijah Moore, you got uh, Braxton Berrios, who is a, a major contributor in the slot. Uh, which is a completely different position than what would be asked of uh, of Denzel. You got Keelan Cole, and then you get to that fifth spot, and it's like, well, all right, where are we going to go with that? And and if you look at what Jeff did yesterday, and you know he was our, he's our starting gunner, which is a critical role on special teams. And um, now it's fortunate, but unfortunate because you like to have only one punt in the game for a different reason. Uh, but we only had one punt. And on that punt, uh, Jeff wins his one-on-one, gets down the field, and has an unbelievable rep to, uh, off of a really good punt from Morstead, and um, we're able to flip the field. So, you know, when you're looking at, at the way the roster is, is rolling, that's that's just what happens. So that's it's not an indictment on uh, Denzel's playing ability. It's just Jeff is the better special teams player and has uh, at this point, and, and that's about it, you know. Is it disappointing that he's not a little higher up being a second round pick? No, I I, I never look at I, I I never once you're drafted to me it doesn't matter. Uh, I think it's a credit to to Joe Douglas and his staff and the wide receiver room that uh, has been assembled and the fact that there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of really good players in that in that room and they're making it very very hard uh, for us to choose who's going to be active and inactive every day, every week because of the work that they're putting in and the, and the way that they're approaching their day in and day out, uh, process. Uh, but at the same time, like, like he's, it, you know, it's exactly like I said yesterday, you know, he's, he is putting in the work, but so are the other guys. And, and we're always going to have a culture here where you have to earn your playing time. It's draft status, how much you get paid, all that stuff. To, I mean, it's not fair to the process of what you're trying to accomplish as a team, and I think players appreciate it in that regard too. So, yeah, Denzel's doing a good job working, and he's he's getting better. Um, and and when he's better than the guys in front of him, he's definitely going to be up. All right, before we let you go, you mentioned culture, and you've been very forthright right from the very beginning that this is going to be a process. And, you know, I guess there are going to be losses, and people have to accept that. But is it hard to change the culture if there aren't wins that go along with the change? And I know it's hard to get wins when you got a rookie quarterback, but are you concerned like chicken and the egg, which is going to come first? How do you change the culture until you start winning games? You know, you're, you're, that, that is always a concern. You don't want to the, – the, the biggest thing to me, um, you, you want to win games. That's why we're in this. We're, we're, we want to win games. But, um, but you, there's also – a real, an understanding of how do you win games, right? I mean, yesterday was a perfect example of our we we domi- We felt like we dominated the trenches uh, with regards to run game and getting pressure on the quarterback and all that stuff. And uh, but they won the game because they played a veteran style of football. You know, you've got I, I believe they started one rookie. You know, and it's and so they played a veteran brand like the veterans. They know how to win, right? we're learning we have to learn how to win and i think what we showed yesterday is a group of men that are just absolutely willing to fight from whistle to whistle get better within every single play and eventually this group's going to learn how to win and when it does it's going to be so explosive and it's going to be so fun to watch that people are going to really appreciate these times coach we thank you as always we'll talk to you next monday yes sir thank you all right thanks a lot that's today's robert sala report Brought to you by Nissan. Nissan's an easier choice than ever with their exciting and fuel-efficient lineup. Now get great offers across their full line. Shop at your local Nissan store on NissanUSA.com. It's kind of interesting, your stuff about Mims. I'm glad you asked it, Peter, but uh, yeah. how is Mims not one of the top five? Well, uh, how about this? How about this? So he currently has to jump one spot. Right. Crowder's coming back. Right. He then so has to jump two to jump spots. Two. Right. So, so it's, that, that's just uh, such a huge letdown. From, and, and obviously, he hasn't shown enough to him in the receiving game to get him to the point where you're not worried about what his special team's contributions would be.
Right. Hmm. But it, interesting. It just shows the positivity of the coach rather than say, I'm disappointed in Mims play. I'm excited about the guys that have passed him. Yeah, but he, I think he's just dancing. I mean, he's he's trying yeah. to put lipstick on a pig here. For but he does reason, it well. Mims is disappointing him. Right? I mean, that's right. the only way to look at it. Mims is disappointing him. He's saying he's working hard, but he's obviously not working hard enough. He's trying to light but, a fire under Mims. Right, And this, but this is the game that you play. Do you want to throw him under the bus, or do you want to compliment the guys that have actually been better? Right. It, it, I know once you're drafted, but still, he was drafted by your general manager as a second-round pick, and the expectation was, especially the way he played last year, that this guy was going to blossom into – a number one receiver. So you have to be disappointed with that, but now maybe you can get excited in a team that's been bereft of talent that there's actually other options. So he's, he's choosing to spin it positive. All right, let's take some phone calls when we get back. 1-800-919-3776. It's Kay LaGreca, Rosenberg, Sala, and you right here on Yes and 98.7 ESPN. Thanks for listening to the Michael K Show podcast. Hear more of Michael, Don, and Peter live weekday afternoon starting at 3 on 98.7 ESPN in New York. The ESPN app, the TuneIn app, or on your smart speaker. Hey Alexa, play 98.7 ESPN.